to welcome you to the Community Congregational Church, a spiritual home for anyone from anywhere and based in the San Francisco Bay. We like to think that our voice represents a liberal and progressive form of Christianity, one that we make no apologies for. We have long been champions of contemplative spiritual practice, justice for everyone and everything, including the earth, and the beauty of divine creation in the earth and in the arts. We have sought to embrace the teachings of Jesus and to share them in ways that make sense in a postmodern world. The Protestant mainline, of which we are a part, has been thought of as dying or dead. It's easy to see why people would think that, and it may actually be true depending on your terminology or the tools that you use to measure the health of religious movements like ours. But the cultural effects of the COVID-19 pandemic are pointing to a different possibility. The one that says liberal Christianity hasn't been dying, it's just been hiding. That may feel like a strange thing to say, but hear me out. For the last four or five decades, forms of Christianity more conservative than ours have been employing whatever new technology came along. And as a result, their voices have been defining Christianity for the last several generations. We, on the other hand, have often continued to preach from our pulpits, tucked away in the familiar embrace of our all important church buildings, with our paper bulletins, well-worn hymns and liturgies. And at the same time, our evangelical and Pentecostal counterparts have flooded the airwaves and lately the internet with their own interpretation of who Jesus is. We have struggled to get other sides of this story into the arena. And thanks to a pandemic, this struggle may be nearing an end. You might say that the progressive church is being outed. And suddenly, finding out how important and how liberating it is to leave our technological closets. At CCC, we used to think that our mission was to bring the public up our hill into our building to hear our message. But now the opposite is true. Our mission is instead to take the church and its message outside of the walls into the public square, which has led us to produce the video that you're watching right now. And this morning, we have a message for you. And it all revolves around the question, where is God in all of this? It's a question that every one of us has asked at one time or another. They're often the first words that fly out of our mouths in times of crisis and of trauma and loss. The very kind of loss suffered by a woman named Wanda Cooper Jones. In 1994, on Mother's Day, she gave birth to a son whose name was Ahmad Arbery. And for the first time in a quarter century, she is today facing her first Mother's Day without him. In a town in South Georgia, about Two and a half months ago, her son, who was black, went for his typical daily run through the neighborhood. And two white men, a father and a son, decided to play the police, the prosecution, the judge, and the jury, pronouncing him responsible for some undocumented burglaries in the neighborhood. He was shot and he was killed for two reasons and two reasons only. He was running and he was black. That is all. It was not until three days ago that the men were charged in his murder. And this after a cell phone video of the crime surfaced and the public outcry 
against this expression of white supremacy and racism became so great. This is one of those times that I might overlap with the people in Mary Oliver's poem who decide suddenly that they need to see God's identity papers. The same one for whom sunrise ought to have been enough. Or maybe I'm in that category like the disciple named Philip who said to Jesus, show us your father and it will be enough. It's like saying, we need just a bit more evidence because it doesn't seem like this is going the way it should be going. Perhaps you could enlighten us just a little. Speaking of the coronavirus, we might say, where is God in all of this? In the suffering of families who've lost or are losing loved ones, or those whose jobs have evaporated, whose businesses are being lost, whose livelihood and futures are hanging in the balance. Where God is right now depends, of course, upon how you think of God in the first place. And this is, by the way, a prime example of a progressive Christian viewpoint coming boldly into the marketplace. For as our friend John Philip Newell told us during his visit with us not long ago, Western thought has generally taught us about a God who exists outside of ourselves. And that we access truth primarily through the intellect. Eastern thought, on the other hand, leaves us with the impression that divinity exists within everything. As Newell likes to say, God is the life within all life, to be found at the heart of all that has being, within the light of the rising sun, within the early morning breeze, within the waking consciousness of our minds and bodies every day. Jesus' response to his friend Philip was basically, you still don't get it? You're still looking for God? Look at me. I and my Father are one. And you and I are one. Today we might say it this way, God is in you, in me, and in everything. God or life energy, or Holy Spirit, or wind, or breath, or divine wisdom, or ground of being, or Christ consciousness, or, or, or. God is here. The only far away God is the one we invent in our shame, or our guilt, or our fear. Our separateness is an illusion that we create in order to mollify the anger we think has to be there. How else would we explain how any of these horrific things even happen? The truth is, horrible things do happen, and when they do, God is here. God is here in the warmth of a mother's embrace in the sharing of loving memories, in the person you meet on the sidewalk who steps six feet aside to let you pass, in the grocery worker who risks her health to serve you, in the friend who hands you a delicious dinner at your curbside. God is here whenever someone treats others the way that they would like to be treated. We need not explain these circumstances of ours in terms of a far off angry God who finds it consistent with his character to visit a plague upon his wicked children. This is incongruent with everything we know to be true. So let's bring a different God out of the closet with us. One who loves us one who gives nourishment and shelter within the arms of her love, and more importantly, empowers us to mature in wisdom 
and to grow up in all things. So let us express our deepest gratitude and appreciation to the one from whom all blessings flow.